The Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. EliteForm.com and IgnitionAPG.com And now, the Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast. Welcome to Iron Game Chalk Talk with your host, Ron McKeefrey. Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! Everything you got! On this podcast, hear Coach McKeefrey's straight talk about training, featuring the top strength and conditioning professionals from around the world. And now, here's your host, Ron McKeefrey. Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Ron McKeefrey. This is episode number 71. Iron Game Chalk Talk is a weekly podcast where we bring you experts in the field to talk shop each week. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to us on iTunes or YouTube or join the mailing list at ronmckeefrey.com to get the latest updates as well as anything else that I have going on. This week we're excited to have Chip Smith with us. Chip is one of the pioneers in our field. He's, he's one of the first guys to start the sports performance industry. Uh, has been doing combine prep training, team training um, for a lot of years and has done it at an extremely high level and um, has really been a guy that's given a lot back to our profession. So, you know, we get into, you know, how that all came about, his journey and how he started um, in combine training, things like that. We talk a little bit about um, his experiences with dealing with international athletes and and uh, training people around the world. And we talk a lot about where he sees the field going and, and how he's been able to balance uh, being a, a, a true professional, but also his family, his faith, and, and things along those lines. So I, I know you're going to get a ton out of it. Uh, before we do, we want to make sure we recognize our sponsors, EliteForm.com and IgnitionAPG.com. Uh, Ignition is a sports performance company based in Cincinnati, Ohio, and you know, we've talked about them on the show quite a bit, but I really can't stress enough the the amount of work um, that they're doing to make a difference, not only in their uh, in, in the profession and, and, and their athletes, but in the community in which they are. And, and so they're doing some phenomenal things. But they recently teamed up with NFLUp.com. Um, NFL, they're putting out some weekly articles there and you know, some of their, their key athletes, you know, Emmanuel Lamar, who we had at Cincinnati, and Luke Keekley down at Carolina, and they're really doing uh, some great things and putting some good stuff out there. So I'd highly encourage you to check them out, not only on uh, NFL.com, but at their website, Ignition APG, or on their Facebook page like we're looking at. You know, one thing I want to make sure that we, we mention is that they have their speed certification, which I think is a huge benefit to strength and conditioning coaches. Um, you know, I, I took their certification last year while being in Cincinnati, and they did a fantastic job with it. And so uh, I know they have one coming up here pretty quick here in Cincinnati. They also do them on demand um, around the country, and so I would encourage you to reach out to them and check that out. Also, if you like Iron Game Chalk Talk, I know you'll truly like strength-ondemand.com, strength on demand is um, an online archive of strength and conditioning clinic presentations. And I wanted to show you on the back end a little bit here. You know, this is basically all the different presentations that we have in there right now. And we're, we're, we're adding to it. We're about to add a lot more to it here pretty quick. But, you know, various topics, various sports, various uh, coaches. And, you know, it's basically you're able to go on your own time, on your own terms, um, you know, pull up a clinic presentation on demand and watch it anywhere you have access to a um, Wi-Fi connection. And so, you know, you click it, obviously the presentation will load and you're able to watch um, any number of clinic presentations from around the country and, um, you know, take notes and the, and the whole deal. So we wanted to basically try to put a clinic in your pocket I think that's what we did. So uh, I'd encourage you to check out Strength on Demand as well as Strength Coach Basic Training, which is our online internship for coaches that are just getting into the field or, or going through a GA or, or a, a practicum or something along those lines. Uh, go to strengthcoachbasictraining.com 
sign up and then we basically will put you in a uh, private Facebook group where you're able to interact with different coaches and we're constantly throwing up uh, different jobs that we see, presentations, site visits, um, and you know discussion topic presentations and things like that. So I know you guys will enjoy that as well. So sit back, enjoy this episode. I know you're going to get a lot out of Chip Smith and we'll see you on the other side. All right, guys. Hey, real excited to have a, a mentor of mine. He doesn't know he's a mentor of mine, but a guy that I've looked up for to for a, a lot, a lot of years. And uh, you know, from every starting off at South Florida and sending athletes up his way to train and just following the work that he's done and, and how he's done it, not just in the profession, but as as the character in which he's done it, has always been a, a, a role model and a, and, and a path that I've tried to to emulate and so real excited to have chip smith on the show coach thanks so much for coming on coach thank you i've, I've uh, as i told you earlier I've, I've been a fan of yours and followed you as you've gone through you started your career and i've had a ton of guys that come through your program in college and in the pros and and uh, it is a big fraternity and and uh, i'm honored that uh, i could get a chance today to share with uh, some of the younger guys kind of my journey and uh, uh, excited to uh, to you know to be able to to share that and and uh, tell you how i how I got into it, it was really uh, interesting because it was it was not something that I planned on you know back a long time ago. I mean I've been out of school a long time. I'm 60 and and I started uh, training guys back in the 70s. So um, you know I've been doing this a really long time. Yeah, well go go into that. I mean what what was where was the motivation and why did you decide to go down this crazy path that we call a profession and, and where <laughs> you know how you've ended up in your current role and what you're doing now. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, I was, uh, I played collegiate football at uh, Liberty University and I played baseball. And so, uh, as an athlete, I was kind of a freak of nature myself. I was a fast white boy. And, and I'd always been taught growing up that speed was heredity. You either had it or you didn't. And there's no way to improve that. You were born with a certain number of fast twitch muscle fibers opposed to slow twitch and you couldn't improve on those. So I was taught that in school. My undergraduate was in, uh, was in physical education with, with emphasis in exercise. So when I got out in, in, uh, 77, I uh, um, started doing strength training. My dad had been military, uh, so when I was a kid growing up, uh, my daddy had lifted weights back in the 40s and the 50s, and you know he got me um, got me training at a really a young age. So I, I understood training principles. Uh, when I was in high school, I was the strongest player in my high school, and when I got in college, I was the strongest player there. And I I'd just been training, and I knew I knew about the weight room, and I knew how to cause muscle hypertrophy, and I knew how to get big and strong. But it never, ever translated to me to making me a better athlete. I mean, I was strong, but it didn't make me a better running back. It didn't, you know, all the things that I knew as an athlete, I was missing. And so I knew that component. So in the late 70s, I was doing strength training back before any teams ever hired individual strength coaches. They would hire guys as a consultant. So they would hire me as a consultant. I would come in and I would write out a, a strength program for, you know, the, a, a pro baseball team or a pro hockey team or, um, you know, individual athletes. And so I did strength training from the seventies to the mid eighties. And, uh, you know, it was, it was interesting. I had a lot of great clients during those years. Uh, but in 1987, my life changed. I was sitting on a bicycle uh, in a, in a, in a commercial gym and I was writing, somebody left a wall street journal and it was an ad in that journal to study abroad. And, um, I picked it up and I, I looked at it and I it said, you know, send in your application or send in your request. And I did. And they called me back and they said, um, uh, we're taking a group of American uh, sports medicine practitioners to the Soviet Union to study, um, you know, here, here's some different areas and, and strength, strength and conditioning, speed development, pre and post pubescent training, pre puberty. And I was always interested in that because at that time I had three, three little boys and, you know, I wanted to know if, in fact, that we could start kids training before puberty because I'd always been taught again in school that you, if you start doing strength training, you, you, you seal off the, the pithy seal on the long bone and you stunt growth. And so we never lifted, you know, we never had kids lift and I wanted to know how they did that. So in 1987, I got selected to go and uh, went to Russia and I studied speed development there at the Soviet uh, Sport Institute in Moscow. And I was there with Dana Ledoux. Uh, Dana coached a long time in the NFL yep. and I was there with Brad Roll and Brad, Brad's still coaching, uh, strength coaching in the NFL. And I was there with, uh, there was six, I think it was six Americans and four Canadians. And uh, it was it was incredible because what I learned, Coach, was that um, even though they didn't play American football and they really didn't pl play baseball, the Russians convinced me that we were training our athletes all wrong. We were making them big and strong as strength coaches, but it didn't translate 
to making them better at the field the quarter of the diamond. And so what what I learned is that they broke movement down and they trained very specific movement. And that made a lot of sense to me because in the mid 80s, I spent two years as an exercise physiologist working in a rehab clinic. And during that time, um, that's when PT world came up with work hardening. And the work hardening term was based on taking somebody and sending them back to their jobs. If you're in a if you're a, a mechanic and you're and you and you and you do a wrench all day long, right. they said you need to do that to mimic what you did. And I said, wow, that's the same thing as athletes. You know, our, our our quarterbacks need to be trained different than our O line, our O line different than our wide receivers, our wide receivers different than our linebackers. And so it just made a lot of sense to me, but I didn't know how to do that. So in '87, when I was in Russia, their facilities were archaic. But their methodology was incredible. Uh, I studied under Yuri Vershansky. Yeah. Uh, I studied under um, um, the, the sprint coach. Uh, uh, I can't remember his, his, his name. Uh, it'll come to me. Uh, that was involved in the Balco. Um, oh, okay. Remy Karchimnia. Yeah. Uh, Remy. Uh, so, I mean, the, the practitioners and, and teachers and professors that we were able to study under were just phenomenal. And they were very, very gracious in terms of teaching us and, and sharing their knowledge. Um, so so I, I learned a, a few things. I learned that they train very specific movement without impeding the mechanics of the movement. So they do that with resistance in the movement. They do that with overspeed or reversibility of effort in the movement. So you remember when you're running downhill as a kid, you're running really fast, and your neuromuscular response is telling your brain to fire really fast to keep you from falling down. So they learned, and their theory was, if you remember, if you watched Carl Lewis run, when he got to 50 meters, it looked like he just accelerated ran by. But what actually happened is he maintained the speed, and they decelerated. Well, the Russians said, you know what? We By training with overspeed, we can delay the onset of muscular fatigue and make the guy faster in a longer distance. And that, and I said, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. I watched him do it. Uh, and then the third thing, uh, so we did, uh, they were the ones that really came up with uh, dynamic uh, movements, they said, you're, you're training at that time. They said, you're training your guys all wrong. What the first thing you do as a strength coach when I was growing up is you do a static stretch. Yep. Of course, we, we've had tons and tons of injuries. And the Russians said, you know what? Here's, here's what we do. We take and we, we do a dynamic warm up to warm up to warm the core uh, to get our athletes ready to be strength flexible that will track guys. And so when I got back in 87, I actually started doing the dynamic warm-ups for a long time. Nobody ever did that. And they were like, well, that's a track workout. I said, no, that's just a warm-up. You know, <laughs> we, it takes 15, 20 minutes to break a sweat. And then what we started doing is we realized that by doing that, we were pre- preventing injuries with our athletes. So we did we did movement dynamics. Then we did uh, resistive movement without impeding mechanics. Then we did overspeed, reversibility of effort. And then the, and then the last component, uh, we did – Reaction and the and Russians convinced me. They said true sports speed is reactive speed. Where you see something, you hear something, your brain processes that, yep. and, and that's a learned response, like riding a bicycle. I, I'll, I'll tell you a st- story real quick about that. Uh, so, so the four things that we did was movement, over speed, resistance, reaction. Today, that system is my system. is called the MORE. Right. It's an acronym for movement, over speed, resistance, reaction. But going back to the reactive thing, when, uh, about four years ago, Nike came through and they were testing athletes and, and reaction. They had come up with the, this reaction drill where, where there was a computer and you put your hands on it and you had a light diagonal. And when you saw the light, you had to touch the screen. Yep. Well, they, at that, that particular year, I had probably 30 or 40 NFL guys doing their offseason training and, and, and um, they were all testing them and getting their, you know, their, evaluating them. And so, I was walking out the door to go to my office, and the, and the guy running the test said, Coach Smith, come over here and and uh, and do this drill. I said, really? I mean, you know, why do you want me to do it? He said, no, just come and do it. I said, man, I'm, you know, I'm 55, 56, 57 years old. I said, he said, no, just come and do it so we get, we, we, you know, we say we did it. I said, all right. So we go over there. So I see the light, and I touch the screen, and he says, do it again. I said, okay, I do it again. He goes, do it again. <laughs> I said, well, am I not doing it right? I mean, you know, I, I know I'm dense, but you know, he goes, no. He said, your hands are quicker than any of the guys I just tested. Wow. He said, were well, you a boxer? And I said, no, I wasn't a boxer. Um, he said, do it again. So I do it again. And he said, you, you have the quickest reaction time of any guys that we've ever tested. So I said, wow. So, of course, at that time, you know, all the NFL guys, they were like, uh, there's no way that old man beat us. <laughs> they were like, I want to let me redo it. So I. I, I started walking out the door, and it, it just it, it triggered something in my mind. I turned around. I walked back. and said, hey. I said, come here. I said, I can explain why my hands are so quick. And he said, okay, I want to know this. 
And we were in boxing. I said, no. But as a kid growing up, we played the slap games yep. all the time. Yep. Did this, you know, off the hips. So we did that all the time. So my brain and my mind was functioning. So when I saw that light, that stimulus, my hands were so quick that, you know, again, that explained that reaction. Yeah. So we train with reaction as part of that system. So in 1987, when I got back, it made a lot of sense to me. I sat down one day after church, and I wrote out a six-week program. I had some NFL guys at that time. One who played at Oklahoma, one at Georgia Tech, and one at Southern Cal. And I said, hey, fellas, I, I think I can make you better. I, I'm not sure. I think worst-case scenario is you, I think you, you know, you're know you going to be in shape. I just don't know that I can increase your measurables. But I said, let's try. I said, I, I, I think I'm on to something. Uh, so we did, we did pre-testing and we did, we did all the combine stuff. We did vert, we did 225, we did 40, 20, 10, change of direction stuff. And right. back then they didn't have some of the drills we do now. Um, so I said, I'll, you know, uh, we'll, we'll come back and retest. Well, we retested six weeks later. I wrote it out. I broke it down into four days. So the program consists of four days of, of, of running. So Monday and Thursday is a, is a resistive day. Tuesday and Friday is an overspeed and reaction day. Okay. Now every day they do um, their dynamic warmups to start, no matter what sport they play. Right. Uh, and then on Wednesdays is a recovery regen day where we do uh, pool. Yeah. So we put our guys in the pool on Wednesday for recovery. I started out doing that in the early nineties. I had a pro baseball guy, and I, I, we put him in the pool for recovery. And then it, that thing just kind of snowballed uh, into what it is today. It's probably the toughest day. But it's great from heavy pounding on Monday and Tuesday for recovery on Wednesday to be able to go Thursday and Friday. So we go five days, four days of running, four days of lifting. And it's a combination of explosive running and explosive lifting that we're able to get, you know, the results we get. So when I got back in 87, um, I started working with some players at Georgia. I went over there, drove uh, from Atlanta to uh, UGA uh, for three years. I started out with one player and in 90, I had, I had like 75 players. Uh, that were coming to me on the side and, and with the blessing of the head coach at that time. Uh, and then in 91, I had uh, I had one of the players, at Georgia Garrison Hurst, that came out. And uh, G uh, helped him get ready for the draft, and he ended up being a first-round draft pick. So from 91 to about 94, uh, I was the only guy that did, in, that did combine prep. And I just started out and I only had one or two guys a year in 94, 95. Uh, 90, I think it was 94, uh, Mike. Mike Mamula, who played at Boston College, was trained by Mike Boyle, yep. and Mike really was a, is a, a is more of a hockey guy. He's, I mean, Mike's a great guy, and, you know, very good friend of mine. Does a, does a great job, uh, but Mike trained Mike Mamula, and Mike went to the combine and just killed it. Well, that was in '94. So after that, in '95, all these agents started coming to Mike and I, and at that time, I think '95 '96, Tom Shaw, who's another close friend of mine, Tom got involved. And started doing. He was he'd been, was a former track coach at Florida State, yep. and and so Tom uh, started doing combine prep. So up until ninety four ninety five, I was the first guy that started doing that. But I started training. Uh, so my system, what, what what is unique about it, is that we train movement specific. For example, um, this year I had twenty pro baseball guys, and I had uh, we pre and post pre and post tested their bat speed. Um, we use a thing called a hit track to measure the, the bat coming off the, uh, the, the, the ball coming off the bat, uh, the velocity of the, of the swing. And then I've invented a hitting harness that works on, it's a rotation, it works on rotation. So baseball is a rotational sport, um, instead of a linear sport. So by training the hips, your hands are extension of your hips. And if you can be explosive, as you know, I can generate bat speed, club head speed, racket speed, uh, anything by training the hips to be explosive. So, so we did pre and post testing, and when we finished, uh, we came back and retested. Now, these are 20 current ma uh, uh, Major League Baseball players. We increased their bat speed anywhere from 15 to 17 miles an hour. Wow. Well, that's very significant. Again, they said, you know, what it does is it, from hitting the ball in the gap, hitting ball to the fence, from the fence out of the park. So what we've been able to do in the system is we've been able to train very specific movement that translates to the field, the court, or the diamond. So I take movement, it doesn't matter what, and I'll tell you a story in a second about that, it doesn't matter what movement that you do, I've got to make you better. It's right. kind of the difference, um, and again, we're a big fraternity, but it's like 
it's like I was telling a, um, a strength coach not long ago. He said, Coach, I, I do the same thing you do. And I said, that's great. I said, but let me ask you that. I said, if a kid comes to you and says he needs to increase bat speed, how do you do that? He said, well, he said, I, in the weight room, I'd have him do cleans. And I said, that's good, but that's a linear motion. Yeah. It's yeah. not doesn't translate to the, to the field. I said, he goes, well, I do. Uh, I might do some uh, free motion and, do, you know, add some weight. And do it, and I said, "Well, that's a that's a slow, controlled movement. A baseball swing is a dynamic, ballistic motion." And I said, "You know." And then, and then the second question I want to ask you, Coach, I said, "Is how do you test that?" Because for me, I've got to quantify everything I do, whether it's a, whether it's a stopwatch or a vertex. Uh, in 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 my world, in the PT world, there's a, there's a term called evidence based. Yep. And evidence based evidence based means that everything that's been proven in the PT world has been proven by the medical community. As a sports performance coach, I'm results based. Everything that I do, everything I do is, is measured on a vertex, on a caliper, on a scales, on a stopwatch, on a bench. Because I got to get results in very specific movement. Because if I can make an athlete, if I can improve those things that an athlete does on on his or her field uh, or, or, or arena of play, it's worth millions of dollars to those athletes. Whether it's increased forty, increased vert. You know, increase bat speed, yeah. increase buckhead drive, drive on a long drive for a golfer. So, so we're very, we've got to get results uh, for everything we do. So we're very. I have another term that I use all the time. It's called purposeful. Everything that I do with our athletes has a purpose. The end result is to make them better at something that they do. And and at the end of the day, for us as coaches, you know, one of the hardest things that we do as coaches is is is, is being motivated to be able to motivate players. They come in and after a while, you know how it is, you're like, yeah. oh, what to do today? I mean, you know, you, you, you know, it, but what, what the, the system does is it gives us a lot of errors for our quiver. And, you know, for me to keep it fresh, I've invented 13 pieces of pro- proprietary equipment that I use with my guys. Um, it's pretty awesome. It's not about me. It's never been about me. It's about the athletes that we train. Sure. And for me, it's about making them better. Um, at the end of the day, I've got to get results. You know, in my world, everything is on display uh, because of the NFL combine, the NBA combines, all the things that we do when a guy plays on Sundays. Um, you know, it's everybody sees the work. If a guy's uh, prepared or he's not prepared, uh, yeah, it's, it's the same with you, but it's, it's a little bit different because there's so many different sports that we do. Right. I wanted to tell you the story uh, because you want to talk some about international, and yeah. I don't know how much time we have. But no, I can it's talk. great. That's absolutely where I want it. You know, you, you, you spent so much time, you know, with football and baseball and what you were used to. But uh, I know uh, you've done it your whole career, but most recently you're working with the Chinese national team and overseas. And, you know, what, what have you learned in that process? Yeah, that's, that's let me tell you, it's that, that's another life, life-changing life uh, event for me as a coach. Because, again, you know, the big three, football, baseball, basketball, I mean, that's what we're known for this country. And right. that's predominantly what I have worked with, even though I've worked with pro tennis players and pro golfers, uh, you, you know, but uh, two years leading up to London, uh, I got a call from um, uh, one of the doctors with the Chinese Olympic program and said, Coach Smith, we've identified you as one of the top three sports performance coaches in the U.S. Would you come to China and, ev- and evaluate our program? And I said, absolutely. I would be I would be thrilled and honored to do that. You know, that's a, that's a, would be a great honor to, for me. And so I go over there, and when I go, I get to Los Angeles, um, I meet two other coaches, and one of them is a young guy that's a sports performance coach from Las Vegas that does basketball only. And then there was another guy who was an academic guy from Texas A&M, and I didn't know either one of those guys, and I'm sure they probably didn't know me. Uh, but we were the three guys that the Chinese had identified. And so we go over there. So the very first day we're there, we go around and we watch. We see they take us to the, um, the badminton venue. They take us to the table tennis venue. They take us to swim and dive. Uh, they take us to weightlifting. They take us to um, volleyball. Uh, they take us to most of their sports, with the exception of maybe volleyball. Uh, the rest of the sports that we that, that they took us to, none of us have ever. I mean, I've never trained anybody that's you know <laughs> that's played ping, ping pong or badminton. <laughs> so the very next day, coach, they come in and the, and the chairman of the Olympic committee is he's really excited and and so he points at the youngest guy and he goes, "Today we want you to train our women's volleyball team." And, and I'm thinking, wow, I didn't know we were, I, I thought we were coming to observe, I, but that's okay. You know, so the, the kid, the young kid said, yeah, okay. So then the next guy's a little bit older, he's probably in his forties and they pointed him and they say, and, and today you're going to work with our, uh, our women's soccer team. 
He said, yeah, okay. And then he's really excited. And he goes, and, and through, an, through an interpreter, he goes and tell Coach Smith today he gets a chance to train our table tennis and our badminton. <laughs> and I'm thinking Forrest Gump. <laughs> you know? I mean, I mean, you got to be kidding me. Ping pong? He's like, oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh, he goes, he's very excited. Oh, and tell Coach Smith that he gets a chance to work with the two current gold medalists from the Beijing Olympics. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, they're, they're I, the dominant in that sport. Was, the pucker factor was there. I was like, oh, my gosh. True story about me. I said, dear Lord, I'm in deep trouble. <laughs> said, Give me divine guidance right now. I said, because I I have no idea. I lifted my head up, and as soon as I lifted my head up, the truth, I'm telling you the truth. God spoke to me and said, you know what, Chip, you train pro tennis players, short it down, forehands, backhands, reaction. You can plug this in and do it. So that afternoon, I'm standing. So, so I asked them, I said, can I watch a practice? And they said, sure. So that morning after we finished, I went and watched the practice for badminton and table tennis. So that afternoon, I'm standing and I'm training a girl that's a current gold medalist uh, from, from Beijing. And I've got her. She's got resistance in, in her lateral movement. She's got uh, – she's got uh, – in abduction abduction she's got some resistance and we're working on reaction i shortened it down put a, ten, a table tennis racket in her hand or, or paddle and so she's reacting lateral and then she's coming up diagonal to the to the table tennis thing so i'm saying i'm training her and this famous chinese coach looks at the the interpreter and says dr chen please tell coach smith in all my years of training olympic champions i never see this type of training i said dr chen tell mr lee I never see this type of training. <laughs> I just made it up. And he starts laughing. He goes, oh, that's really funny. I said, no, I'm telling him, I don't train pink table tennis players. But the point is, I was able to plug my system in. Right. And listen, in London, I had I had Olympic gold medals in table tennis, in badminton, in three-meter diving. I had uh, 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 I had track uh, vaulters, I mean, uh, gymnastic vaulters. I did weightlifting. I had, I had very non-traditional sports. Uh, that I had never trained as a coach. It, it completely um, refreshed me as a coach because, number one, athletes are athletes. No so you said internationally. Listen, I couldn't speak Chinese. They couldn't speak English. But when you touch somebody or you show them or demonstrate, it's a, it's a bond. It's a, you know, sports are such a, 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 a bond that bonds so many be, you know, people and coaches and athletes. And, you know, I, I couldn't pronounce their names. I couldn't even tell you the athletes that I had at one Olympic gold. Uh, but I know them and they know me. And by the time that I left, one of the things that uh, their culture is very standoffish. But, you know, again, I've always been, been raised and, and the way that I treat my athletes is, uh, you know, for me, I show affection. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I don't do I don't do a titty bump. I do a hug. You know, I, I tell my guys I love them. It's all about relationships. And at the end of the day, I, I love my guys. I don't care whether they play their first round draft picks or they or, or they never play in the National Football League. For me, as a coach, I'm passionate about relationships. You know, I want to know when these guys have had their first child. I want to know when they get married. You know, again. I want them to know that I care about them as people. And if, if any coaches or young coaches are listening to me tonight, today, let me tell you, 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 you want to love, you want to love, you want me to love you as a coach, love my kids. Yep. Love my kids. Because if I see you loving all my kids, I will pay you whatever you charge for as long as you want, as long as I know that you genuinely love them and care about them. And that's been the, that's been my philosophy from day one. Again, I've built, I've been very blessed and fortunate. I put 1,400 guys in the NFL, and I have 300 current clients. I've trained at the top of the top. But you know, at the end of the day, um, it's, it's like I tell everybody, they say, Coach, I want to come back and train in the off season." And I'll say, "Did you? do you call your mama and ask her, can you come home? <laughs> no, you just show up. That's what I want you to do. You just come and show up. So the international thing was I did two years with a Chinese leading up to London. Yep. Uh, it's an unbelievable experience. Um, again, athletes are athletes. I had some really unique things. I had weightlifters that I had to work on uh, uh, eccentric loading uh, for them. Just very specific things. I, I developed some dry land swimming uh, um, that we did with their swimmers. Um, uh, so, I mean, it was things, that, again, that, that I had to think outside the box because we're, we're used to just doing – getting guys big and strong and even movement specific training with teams uh you know I, you know how to do that but when you got to sit down and you got a three meter diver yep. and you got to figure out how to translate to making him better as a diver i mean again you you, you know I, so i had to watch that so i trained again i trained in the more system movement over speed resistance reaction and uh, was able to get results you know at, at that level and uh, well, you know it's uh it's funny um my youngest son's uh, actually a missionary in Africa, 
and um, he, he worked for FCA and he played uh, was very uh, he was the very first uh, scholarship player that played at Duke University that graduated in three years had two years of eligibility left went to uh, played at Duke then he went and played at Cal Berkeley in the Pac-10 um, set all their records broke Michelle Lynch's vertical jumped 40 inches and when you get a white boy to jump 40 inches uh, you know you're on to something so I'm passionate about all these guys that you know the Brian Erlackers and Champ Bailey's and the and, uh, you know, the Colin Kaepernick's and those guys, but when you see it with your own children, yep. uh, it, it's easy to, to, to be passionate about that. But Zach, my son, has been over in South Africa working with uh, pro surfers and, and, uh, and uh, rugby players and soccer players. And so last year, well, yeah, yeah, last year, uh, the Chinese called me back and wanted me to come back over and work with, uh, work with them. And, you know, that 16 hour flight is just horrendous, and I just didn't really. Feel called to do it. Two years was an unbelievable experience, and I would encourage any coaches to ever get that opportunity to, to, to do that. You know, and let me also say that the two things that I told them: number one, I said I would never wear anything that has China on it. I said number two, if you cut me, make make sure you understand I bleed red, white, and blue. And I said <laughs> no, as long as you know that, I said we, we're, we've got a great understanding. Because I had people, I had people that said, Coach, you know, why would you work with the Chinese or I am? I said, you know what, athletes are athletes. And, and I, I'm a firm believer, and you, you mentioned earlier about my faith. Um, for me as a person, you know, my priorities in life, first and foremost, is, is not my faith. It's my relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. And there's a big difference right. with, 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 with guys. You know, a lot of guys have a head knowledge, not a heart knowledge. So for me, it's that personal relationship. And it's my family and my vocation and advocation, my calling. So I'm passionate about helping kids get better. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to be physically, mentally, and spiritually fit. Hold on. You made a. I heard you uh, on a on an interview mention. You know, somebody had, had asked you specifically about that topic. They had a great response where it's like, you know, well, you know, is that are you are you kind of turning your back on the U.S. by helping the Chinese or whatever? And your response was, it's like, it's no different than a school teacher going over there and helping teach English or a missionary going over there and helping teach religion. It's you know, you're teaching athletes how to be athletes, and 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 I and and as a, a father that's adopted three children from the Ukraine and, and, and another yeah. from Honduras. Um, you know, whenever you take a, a trip outside of the United States, the first time it, it opens your mind so much. And, um, you know, and, and you all of a sudden you, you, you stop thinking just domestically, you think globally. And, uh, yeah. you know, our, our world, you know, the one great thing about sport is it can unite a lot of people. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it does every four years with the Olympics and it does all, you know, throughout the year. And if we could just translate that more, I think a lot, our, our world would be a lot better place for sure. And so it is yeah. definitely noble and, um, you know, I, you know, I think much needed for, um, us to open our doors and, 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 and for them, for different countries to open their doors for coaches to get around the world to be able to, to because you know coaches have the best hearts you know it's yeah. just people that 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 you, you don't you don't last very long unless you're willing to give back you know and and uh, it's a, great ambassadors for any country you know well you know that that's a great point i mean it's you know my hat some kudos to you for for reaching out and adopting you know kids or kids and and um, you know, I, I'm, I'm again, I'm passionate about helping people and and developing those relationships. And and again, for me, to get an, any opportunity that I get, um, you know, God says all good and perfect gifts come from the Father above. So for me, God's opened the doors, and, and I really laugh because I say, here I'm a, here I'm a redneck from Swanee, Georgia. God dropped me right in the middle of a, a, a communist country with their most prized possessions, you know. And I shouldn't have. Again, it was nothing. I was not worthy. To, I was not worthy to be the. There are a lot of guys way smarter than me that, that could have done what I did, but because I was a willing vessel to do that, he opened the door. And sometimes that for us, uh, again, the the international relationship that, that we're able to do, uh, you know, for me, again, you have to be physically, mentally, and spiritually fit. And if you're not one of those three, then you're not a total person. So getting a chance to share that with athletes, and again, you know, some people are turned off by that. And, you know, if they are, I'm sorry about that. But, you know, that's, that's who I am. And, and, you know, I think, again, I think God blesses you when you when you, when you give Him honor and glory for what for the tools that, that He's given you and and again like I said a lot you know a lot of people are, are offended by that and 
you know, so be it. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you're working with athletes, athletes are athletes. It doesn't matter whether they're Chinese or Japanese or whatever. Um, like you said, you know, I went over there selling nuclear se- secrets and in the international community, the, the bas- USA, I mean, uh, uh, the basketball program was run by all U.S. coaches. Uh, the Chinese now have in, in our Olympic program have their coaches over here working with uh, uh, speed skaters and some of some of their sports. So it's it's a it's a big crossover. Yeah, it's, uh, it's becoming community a small world and, for sure. Yeah, yeah, crossover community and and uh, and the fact that they're willing to share and we're willing to share uh, again. We can't take it with us. And for me, as a coach, if there's a young coach who can learn something, you know, for me, I, I feel like that's why I'm passionate about helping athletes and coaches. And we have open door policy when coaches want to come in and watch and observe. They're always welcome to do that. And and uh, you know, none of us are smart enough to take credit for any of this stuff. Somebody else figured it out. We just, you know, we've just been been entrusted with it. And and um, again, been blessed to, to to work with some great athletes as you have. In your career, and and uh, it's a lot of fun, man. It's it's no, no. like you said. Can you get up? You know, when you get up, you go to work every day, and you wear shorts, and you get to hang out with some really cool people, and and uh, impact some lives, man. That's that's pretty special. And that's what it's all about, for sure. You know, well, coach. You know, you're a guy that that blazed your own trail early on. I mean, you identified the sports performance industry before there really was a sports performance industry. Now that you've been in it for you know X number of years and you've seen everything, you've done everything, where do you, where do you see the field headed? What's the next step for strength and conditioning? You know that's a great question, Coach. That uh, when I first started, it was it was a, a cottage industry. Uh, today it is an industry, and uh, you know it's I, I like to I like to uh, say um, you know a few years back when Lawrence Seagrave came up with the velocity model. Uh, and Velocities went and they sold a bunch of them and a lot of them closed, but they, they, they were like the pioneers. Even though I had been doing it on a mom and pop scale, they took it national and they educated a lot of people and, you know, they were like the, they were like the pioneers and, and they took all the arrows and, and now, you know, the people coming in behind them are like the settlers, but you got to give them credit. They, they educated a lot of people on sports performance. Uh, I think our industry is, um, uh, I think it's it's in, in, in its infinite stages. I think there's there's so much more. Uh, we're working on some stuff that's pretty cool. Uh, I think the next wave is vestibular training. Uh, we're working on some stuff now with some athletes and and some some PTs and and some things that 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 I think you know there's a direct correlation again between concussions and con, con, uh, collision sport like football that we're that you both both of us work in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can get kids back and get guys back uh, by by working on that cognitive part of, of training and, and um, you, know, you know there's been some some hit and miss stuff and some stuff that's been done but I think that's a whole new new field uh, that, that guys that are going to you know be able to, to make some impact um, through reaction through uh, vestibular training so um, you know there's just so many things and so many so, so many new things that uh, have been developed in the industry and and uh, in terms of training modalities and and things that can make athletes better, and and uh, I think you know the days of the the, the what I call the Weeder ma- Weeder Mafia. You know, you do three, <laughs> three sets of ten. Why? Because Weeder said do three sets of ten. You know, we, when I was growing up, that's what we did. You know, we read his magazine and we did three sets of ten. Right. I mean, it's just it's changing so much. This you know because we're the research and 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 things that are being developed for us as coaches that can give us that can quantify why we do what we do, and that's one of my big. You know, for for me, being being and, and I have a moniker to speak coach, coach, but really I'm a movement specialist. But you know, in our in our world, and you you see this all the time. How many kids do you get that come in that, that says they you know they said you know I run a four I run a four 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 three forty. Oh yeah. And you time them, and the kid runs a four six four seven, which is you know which is decently fast. Right. But he's like, oh, you can't be right. You time him again, and and then you have to tell him, look, dude, you just ran it. That's right. <laughs> you know, and, and that's my you know the only consistencies in – and the t- and testing and evaluation is inconsistencies, and so that's one of my soapboxes. Is you know you, you've got to be consistent because in my world, in the sports performance world, I get a lot of guys that don't really know what they're doing, but they know they know they know they can clock somebody fast. I mean, slow coming in and fast going out. Oh yeah, you know, and so they, they show an improvement. And then when I get them, I'm like, oh, you know, you, you ran four eight, and kid thinks he runs a four three, and then I got to go through that with right. him, and and uh, so. We try to abstain from evil. Everything we do, we try to do electronic timing. You know, we try to do everything where you know it's 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 our hands are off. We say, look, it is what it is. You know, as coaches, all we're interested in doing is showing improvement. 
how much improvement is dependent upon how hard you work, what kind of effort you give. But at the end of the day, if it's one tenth or it's a tenth and a half or whatever it is, that's my job is to make you better at something. That's right. Uh, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fabricate it because when, guess what? When you go to the next level, whether it's a, the NBA or Major League Baseball or the NFL, you're gonna test them and you're gonna say, well, you know, that guy turned with Chip Smith and Chip said he ran a four or four. And the kid runs a four seven all day long. I lose, I lose credibility. So again, we 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 try to develop um, a consistency with in, in our testing and evaluation with all of our athletes, and and that way that we know so that when you call me when you're on that next level and you say, hey Chip, you know, tell me about this kid, and I say, coach, you know, here's what we got him at, um, here's what he was doing, here's his effort. Then you know, when I call you on kids that are that, that the one thing that. You know, and I've said this from year year in year out. I can reach in that bag and I can pull out something that can you know measure his vertical, his vertex. I can reach in that bag and pull out something that can measure two twenty five and a clock that measures forty. But till I can reach in that bag and pull something out that can measure this, gotcha. your heart, your heart. Don't tell me a kid can't play because I've seen a lot of guys and I've had a lot of guys over the years that didn't meet the measurables as you have as a coach that could play. They're football players yeah. and. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing that uh, I never tell kids. You know, I'm, I'm realistic. If a kid calls me, he comes in, and he's a 5'2 corner, you know, or a 5'2 DN, I'm like, dude, you just, you know, you might want to look for something else. Right. But most of the time when we get guys, again, it's the, the guys that are good athletes that can play, you know, if they're given an opportunity. So, um, you know, it, it's it's changing, uh, but I think it's changing for the better. I think there's a lot of really young guys that are out there that are that are doing great great things and great job and and uh, working with athletes and making them better and and uh, I, I'm excited again I I'm humbled that uh, again I had no foresight to in, in 87 or 88 to come back and start something um, in terms of sports performance but um, I wanted to make athletes better and. I knew that I had to I had to train different than the way I had been trained and the way I had trained athletes is because I just it was not translating to the field the court of the dime and I was getting right. big and strong and it wasn't it wasn't making him a better you know a, a better receiver or a better quarterback and uh, you know a better receiver uh, a running back or whatever so oh, that's great well coach I don't want to keep it too long but you know we always end the show with some resources here do you have a do you have a quote that you live by or verse or something that I do. <clears throat> I do. I have many, but but my 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 verse is Proverbs twenty seven seventeen, and it's uh, it's iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And again, I think for us as coaches, you know, we surround ourselves, and I, this is what I tell all my players. You know, um, we surround ourselves with with people of like mind, uh, like character, and uh, for my my job is 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 to 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 grind that you know to grind that diamond uh, so that when we tilt it to the sun, it sparkles and. Um, uh, you know, again, to whom much is given, much is required, and and that's the way that we, you know, we live our life. That's the way we coach our guys, and and um, you know, I, I tell them again, you know, they've been blessed with tremendous, tremendous gifts, and God's going to hold you accountable with those gifts, and you know, don't squander that. Don't look back on your life and say, man, what if? Uh, which a lot of guys have done, you know, but um, I try to make them accountable. I try to make them, you know. When 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 they're with me, I try to have them try to get them to have accountability partners and to develop that now. So when they get on the next level, whether it's a chaplain or it's it's somebody else that is you know is, is a strong believer, somebody that's like mine, they said, "Hey man, you know you you, you don't want to surround yourself with yes men. You want to surround yourself with people that are going to tell you the truth and going to love you unconditional." So that's kind of my. Well, that's great. What um. What about you know some resources for young coaches? A, a book, a website, maybe an app recommendation that you, you know, that you use with your athletes, or um, some books that you read recently that you would you would highly recommend. Um, that's a great question. Um, um, my mind just went blank. I had a couple of books that that, that um, one was Dr. Vershonsky's book. Um, yeah. Oh shoot, um, the practical approach. Uh, that's, that's one, but he's got another one. Um, he's got another one out that's, that kind of explains he, he's the one that really came up with, he didn't invent plyometrics. He, he invented what was called the shock yep. treatment, uh, or, or shock treatment, shock, shock training. Uh, but it was, uh, um, you know, but his, his whole theory on training was, was pretty incredible. And it was based on, uh, based on, uh, reps and sets and tonnage and, and, uh, things that we didn't do at that time with our athletes. But, uh, those, those are good books. Um, you know, I've got a book out, Football Training Like the Pros, for any of the football guys that kind of explain my system. Um, um, let's see. 
Uh, I can't think of any coach. My my, my, my what shot. About, what about when you're you know you're surfing the web or whatever on these trips? You know, is there a website that you check out regularly? Um, you know what? Um, I, I I like Mike Boyles. I like my, what Mike does. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. There's some other. Uh, you know, for me, it's more sports related. Uh, so I have to. You know, I try to yeah. stay up on. It doesn't have to be strength and conditioning. It could be anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ProFootballTalk.com is, yep. is one of the sites that I have to go to. You know, looking for when guys are hurt. Um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think uh, um, what other resources that uh, you know my computer is loaded with sites that I go to for you know for That's information. Um, NSCA is good. Um, you know, for articles um, um, on training. Um, you know, so I do want to say that that I have developed. You know, now I have a national certification that called the More, where you actually yep. get the letter CSPS, um, uh, Certified Sports Performance Specialist, which is um, I think it's the only sports true for sports performance. It's, it's like the CSCS, but it, it's way more intense. You spend eight hours a day for a week, and uh, you take a you take a written test and you take a practical test. Uh, when you come in, we give you a sport in a position within that sport, and you got to be able to tell us how you're going to train it. Uh, so we, we've been really excited. We, we're in the second year of that. Um, I'm currently working on a master's program in sports performance. I'm, I'm not at liberty to tell you where yet. Sure. Um, that's 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 going to come out in, in uh, January uh, where you'll be able to get your master's in sports performance in my system, in the Moore system. So I'm I'm excited about that. You know, we try to stay on the cutting edge and, and uh, we try to educate as much as we can and, and uh, share as much as we can. So uh, there, again, there's just there's so many tremendous with the, with the web now. There's so many resources that we have as coaches that I mean, sure. you can Google anything at all and, and <laughs> you know find out what you want to find out. I hear you. That's, that's my computer too. It's loaded. I don't even know half the places I go to, but I, you know, I go through them all. But you know what? Last question here, Coach. What 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 is the best piece of coaching advice that you've ever received? That's a, again, that's a great question. You know, it, it's for me as a coach. Um, I think um, I think early on in my career, um, the, the saying I said earlier uh, about if you if you want to be successful in our in our industry, uh, if you want me to love you, love my kids, and yeah. I think for me how that's translated to my business is, you know, I, every Thanksgiving I text I've got. 3,000, 3,500 numbers in my phone I, all day long. I text all my all my contacts. Say, you know, you know, it's hey man, I'm thinking about you. I love you. Appreciate you. You know, have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. And you know, again, it's it, it, you have to take. It makes it makes it. Uh, you have to make an effort to keep those keep those relationships up. But once you once you do that, it's so rewarding. And for me, again, you know, it's about surrounding myself with people that are that are, that are like me. Uh, again, at the end of the day, I don't want a kid that came that was undrafted free agent to think that I only liked him because his agent was paying me. And so, for me, I want to care about him as a person. And, and developing those relationships, I mean, it's all these kids are going to change the world. And right. as coaches, a lot of coaches are missing out on the opportunity to get a chance to really know these kids. So, you know, the one thing that I would tell young guys is, is in your in your career, whether you're in strength conditioning field, whether you're in sports performance, whether you're doing rehab, whether you're a personal trainer, develop relationships relationships with people true relationships be re- relational uh with everybody from your vendors uh to your athletes uh to your peers um because they're you know again we're in a very egotistical business yep uh, i can tell you stories early on when i first got into it i would call guys and they would say oh who are you your your personal trainer i'd say no coach i'm a, you know tell me about your athlete and so again there's a lot of egos and 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 um you know, fortunately for me, at my age, I don't hang out a lot with those guys. Um, uh, but I want to surround myself with guys that are passionate about helping helping kids and, on all levels. And and if I can if I can help one kid or one coach, uh, then it's worth it. You know, for me. Right. So no, uh, I'm very appreciative that you'd have me on. And and uh, uh, I'm not sure that anything I say is worth anything to anybody. But uh, <laughs> and truly blessed. I've been blessed that you know the good Lord has put me in a position to. To, to have impacted a lot of kids and, and uh, a lot of young men, and, and now I'm getting some of their sons, and it's pretty it's, it's pretty, a pretty neat, cool. Thing. That's pretty neat. Well, Coach, you know, as a guy that's that's followed you and, and, and benefited from the materials that you've put out for sure, and, and just a, it's so it's so rewarding to see a guy that 
like you said, they're in your 60s and you're, and you're still on top of your game and you're still giving back to the profession and you're still as passionate about it, if not more, now as you were 30 years ago. And this yep. field is, this field will eat you up and chew you out if you don't, yep. if you don't truly love it. And, and, and one thing about you and that I know for a fact is that you truly love not only the profession, but what helps you love the profession is that you truly love the people that you come in contact each and every day. And, um, can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me or the profession and, and just really, truly appreciate you coming on the show. Well, I'm honored. Uh, like I said earlier, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of yours, Ron, and you, you, you've done a great job. And, and, you know, again, I, I look at you and I see a young me when I was in the, in, in your, in your, where you're at now and, and, uh, see how you've impacted the, the, not only, not only the coach, the, the athletes, but the coaches that surround you and, and, uh, and the people in our industry. And, and, uh, you know, God says a, a good name is to be cherished above all. And, and for us at the end of the day, you know, when we get to heaven, God's not going to say, how, how many first round draft picks did you, did you, did you train? He's going to say, how'd you impact my kingdom with the tools I gave you? And so for me, I, I feel very, I feel a huge responsibility to make sure that, um, you know, that I, I can, I can be a, uh, uh, somebody of character that in our industry that, that uh, kids can look up to and, and uh, not that I want them looking up to me, but I'm just saying you know, that, that you can share with them. And, uh, cause there, there are a lot of kids, man, you know, in our world, there are a lot of kids that don't have, uh, strong male models, role models in their life. And, and, uh, I mean, over the years, I've been again, very blessed and fortunate that some, some young men have, have, uh, have come to me and, and, and spent time with me and I consider them like sons. And, and, uh, again, my life has been enriched so much because of guys like you and, and other guys that I've, that I've had the opportunity to work with in the industry. So no, man, the pleasure is mine. Trust me. It's uh it's an honor to, to be able to share any of that. And hopefully somebody will pick, pick up one or two things that will help them uh, or at least encourage them uh, to continue doing, you know, doing what they're doing. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks so much. Thanks again. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors, EliteForm.com and IgnitionAPG.com for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out RonMcKeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefrey can be found on Twitter at rmckeefrey, on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash ron.mckeefrey. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk.